वेलकम टू सर्विसेज मार्केटिंग नाउ वी विल टॉक अबाउट मॉड्यूल 34 सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कंप्लेन हैंडलिंग एंड सर्विस रिकवरी एंड वी स्टार्टेड विद मॉड्यूल 33 एंड वी विल कंटिन्यू विद मॉड्यूल 35 ऑन दिस टॉपिक लेट अस सी व्हाट आर द थिंग्स दैट वी विल टॉक अबाउट इन अंडर दिस टॉपिक दैट इज इन मॉड्यूल 34 सो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट वी विल एक्सप्लेन द सर्विस रिकवरी पैराडॉक्स the second is we will understand the principles of effective service recovery systems and the third is we familiarize with guidelines for frontline employees on handling complaint customers and on recovery from service failures so again keep in mind that all through the service recovery and service failure we are concerned about and bothered with the frontline employees because they are the people who interact with the customers they are the people where service go wrong or service fails and these are the people that are the, these are the people that are responsible for service recovery now what is this service recovery paradox the service recovery paradox describes the phenomena where customers who experience an excellent service recovery after a failure feel even more satisfied than customers who had no problem in the first place so now keep in mind that when the service delivery is accord is according to the promise then the customers are satisfied so that is uh, one thing another in the service recovery paradox what is happening is that once the service fails and then companies take some adequate action for service recovery then that makes customer even more satisfied for example a passenger may arrive at the check in counter and find there are no seats for him due to over booking even though he has a confirmed seat what has happened is that the service has failed so that is service failure although he had a confirmed ticket but then there were no seats available because the airline they have overbooked the aircraft now what to do in order to recover the service so to recover the service the passenger is upgraded to a business class seat at no additional cost the customer ends up being more satisfied than before the problem had occurred now if he would have got got a seat in the economy class for which he had uh, purchased the ticket then he would have uh, uh, been normally satisfied but now because no seat was satisfied because no seat was available he was promoted to the next higher class that is the business class without any additional charge so that was service recovery and now this has led to more satisfaction or delight in the customer so that is why this is called as service recovery paradox so this if the recovery efforts are good then the customer becomes more satisfied uh, or even delighted so the service recovery paradox may lead to the thinking that it may be good for customers to experience service failure so they can be delighted as a result of an excellent service recovery so now the paradox may lead someone to think that the service should be made to fail in the first instance so that the company has the chance to recover the service and that will delight the customer however this approach would be too expensive for the firm because recovery needs recovery efforts will uh, uh, will incur certain kind of cost in conclusion the best strategy is to do it right the first time as michael hagro put said service recovery is turning a service failure into an opportunity you wish you never had so this is the opportunity that you wish you never had so the best thing is the best thing for a service company is to do it right the first time whether a customer comes out delighted from a service recovery may also depend on the severity and recoverability of the failure for example no one can replace spoiled wedding photos a ruined holidays or eliminate the consequences of a debilitating injury caused by a service equipment so in this case in these kind of cases there can be no recovery in such situations it is hard to imagine anyone being truly delighted even when the most professional service recovery is conducted let us look at the principles of effective service recovery system 
the first is recognizing that current customers are a valuable asset base. Managers need to develop effective procedures for service recovery following unsatisfactory experience. Unfortunately, many service recoveries fail and some of the common causes of failure are managers disregard evidence that show that service recovery provides a significant financial return. Companies do not invest enough in actions that would prevent service issues. So now, although you may be looking at an opportunity where you can recover service and can get a more delighted customer, but unfortunately many, many service recovery they fail. So that lead to the further dissatisfied customers and they fail because managers they disregard the evidence that shows that service recovery provides a significant financial return or companies do not invest enough in actions that would prevent service issues. Or customer service employees fail to display good attitudes, organization fail to make it easy for customers to complain or give feedback. So all these reasons, all these four, uh, the, these four reasons, because of these four reasons, the service recovery efforts, they may fail. Next, we discuss three guiding principles for how to get it right. So, the first thing is make it easy for customers to give feedback. So, how do we get the service recovery right? The first thing that a company needs to do is to make it easy for customers to give the feedback. Second, enable effective service recovery. So, the front line or other employee should be empowered, enabled to go in for effective service recovery. And the third is to establish appropriate compensation levels. The compensation levels that reflect the agony that the customer has, go, has gone through, one and second also the time and efforts and energy that he spent when the service is being recovered. So, these are the three important things that, uh, these are the three guiding principles to, uh, to get it right. Now, this are, these are the principles of effective service recovery system. First is do the job right the first time, then effective complaint handling, identify service complaints, resolve complaint, uh, complaints effectively and the fifth is learn from recovery experience. Now, this is, this leads to increased satisfaction and loyalty and to identify service complaints, you, uh, can, you need to conduct research, monitor complaint, develop a complaint as opportunity culture. So, complaint is an opportunity. The third, next thing is develop effective systems and training in complaint handling. So, you, there should be systems whereby employees can be trained in complaint handling and then conduct a root cause analysis, why the service has failed, what are the problems in the service, learn from service experience and close the loop via this feedback and then you keep on going making, uh, you keep on making your system foolproof. So, you keep on service, so you make service delivery foolproof. So, this is what is needed. Now, strategies to reduce customer complaint barriers. How do we reduce customer complaint barriers? Let us look at what are the barriers, what are the complaint barriers for dissatisfied customers. The first is inconvenience that is difficult to find the right complaint procedure. This, the next is effort for example, writing and mailing a letter. The second barrier to this uh, uh, filing of complaint may be doubtful payoff, uncertain whether any or what action will be taken by the firm to address the issue the customer is unhappy with. So, the customer is unhappy and uh, but then he is not sure what action the company will take. And the third here is unpleasant, unpleasantness that is fear of being treated rudely fear of being hassled, 
and fear, uh, feeling embarrassed. Now, let us move back to first that is inconvenience. Now, what are the strategies to reduce this barrier? The first is what are the strategies to reduce these barriers? So, make feedback easy and convenient. Put customer service hotline numbers, email, the website and or postal address on all customer communication material. So, for example, like letters and bills and brochures, website, phone book, yellow pages, listing, etc. When we are talking of the second type of complaint barrier that is doubtful payoff, then what are the strategies to reduce these barriers? Reassure, reassure customers that their feedback will be taken seriously and will pay off. So, it is not only for the, for the purpose of uh, getting uh, complaints, but then they should be assured that some kind of action will be taken. Have service recovery procedures in place and communicate this to customers, for example, in customers' newsletters and websites. Feature service improvement that resulted from customer feedback. When unpleasantness is the complaint barrier, then what are the strategies to reduce this barrier? Make providing feedback a positive experience. Earlier we have seen that this was a negative experience. Now the strategy to, re to reduce these barriers, a strategy to increase customer complaint is to make this feedback a positive experience. Thank customer for their feedback can be done publicly and in general by addressing the entire customer base. Train service employees not to hassle and to make customers feel comfortable when they are or after they have complained. Allow for anonymous feedback. So, the feedback can, can be without the name. So, these are the strategies to reduce complaint, uh, customer complaint barriers. Now, when it is when the, when the strategy is to make it easy for customers to give feedback, how can managers overcome unhappy customers reluctance to complain about service failures? And the best way is to directly address the reason for their reluctance. Many companies have improved their complaint collection procedure by adding a special toll free lines. So, the whole ball game is to, ma is to make this giving feedback or uh, giving complaint, lodging complaint easy. Now, how do we enable effective service recovery? Recovering from service failures take more than just pious expressions of determination to resolve any problem that may occur. It requires commitment, planning and some clear guidelines. Specifically, effective service recovery should be proactive, planned, trained and empowered. It is not only about having your expressions of determination that you will do something about that, but there, there, uh, there are things that need to be done for effective service recovery and these are those four things. What does this mean? Service recovery should be proactive. Service recovery is ideally initiated on the spot, preferably before customers have a chance to complain. Service personnel should be sensitive to signs of dissatisfaction and ask whether customers might be experiencing a problem. For example, the waiter may ask a guest who has only eaten half of his dinner, is everything all right, sir? The guest may say, yes, thank you. I am not very hungry or the steak is well done, but I had asked for medium rare. The second response then gives the waiter a chance to recover the service. So, this, these, these, these are some of the examples that can lead to service recovery. So, although he was not complaining formally, but then this is what he said and that and if the, that, that waiter is trained and empowered, then he can take this as an opportunity, opportunity to recover the service. Recovery procedures need to be planned. Contingency planning have to be developed for service failures especially for those that occur regularly and cannot be designed out of the system. For example, revenue management practices in the travel and hospitality industries often result in overbooking and travelers are denied boarding or hotel guests are walked even though they had confirmed seats or reservations. To simplify the task of this frontline uh, staff, firms should identify the most common service problems such as overbooking and then develop solutions set for employees to follow. 
So, this is a normal practice in these kind of industries to over overbook. So, now obviously, if the if uh, a air, aircraft or a hotel is overbooked, then there will be some customers who have to be who have to wait or who will be denied uh, the service. So, now that uh, uh, leads to ser uh, service failure and there is now a chance to recover this service. And the, the task of the, the frontline staff here uh, should be to identify most common uh, sort of service problem uh, service problems such as overbooking and then develop solution sets for employees to follow. So, what, what should be done if the company has overbooked and more than capacity customers have uh, reported. Now, service recovery skills must be taught. As a customer, you may quickly feel insecure at a point of service failure because things are not turning out as you had expected. Effective training builds confidence and competence among frontline staff, enabling them to turn distress into delight. So, now this recovery skills employees, the frontline employees were trained in this recovery skills and that make uh, that distress into delight. With effective training of how to handle service solution sets for routine service failures and for non-routine service failures, frontline staff can turn distress into delight with confidence and the skill that they have learnt. Service recovery requires empowered employees. Service recovery efforts should be flexible and employees should be empowered to use their judgment and communication skills to develop solutions that will satisfy complaining the customers. So, these frontline employees should be empowered, they should be trained as we have seen in the earlier slide to use their judgment and communication in order to develop a solution to satisfy a complaining customer. Employees need to be able to make decisions and spend money in order to resolve service problems promptly and recover customer goodwill. For example, at the Rills Carlton and Sheraton hotels, employees are given the freedom to be proactive rather than reactive. They, they take ownership of the situation and help resolve customers' problem to the best of their ability. So, now here the frontline is employees, they are trained and given and empowered to treat, to rectify the problem. Next issue is how generous should the compensation be? Clearly vastly different costs are associated with possible recovery strategies. How much compensation should a firm offer when there has been a service failure or would an apology be sufficient enough? So, there may be a situation whereby the customer wants only an apology, but that may not be across all situations. So, how much compensation should a firm offer or can they handle the angry customer without giving uh, monetary compensation? Will an apology be sufficient for, for uh, to that customer? So, the following rule of thumb can help managers to answer these questions. What is the positioning of your firm? So, that is the first question. What is the positioning of your firm? If a firm is known for service excellence and charges the premium price for the quality, then customer will expect service failure to be rare, so that the firm should make a demonstrable effort to recover the few failures that do occur and be prepared to offer something of significant value. So, when the service positioning is, when the positioning of this firm is that they give excellent service and they are also charging a premium, in that case the company should be prepared to offer something of significant value to the customer if service fails. How severe was the service failure? So, that is another question. All failures will not be equally severe. So, more severe uh, failures will require obviously require more compensation as compared to less service failures. So, customer expects little for minor inconveniences. In this case, often a sincere apology will do. But a much more significant compensation if there was major damage in terms of time, efforts, annoyance and anxiety was created by the failure. The third is who is the affected customer? Long term customers, those who spend heavily at the service provider expect more and it is worth making an effort to save their business because they are 
profitable in the long term, so the company will have to invest some more in order to retain their businesses. One time customers tend to be less demanding and have less economic importance to the firm. So, the first time customers they will uh, they are uh, by themselves less demanding and also they are not so important economically to the firm. How, now, how to deal with complaining customers? Both managers and frontline employees must be prepared to deal with, di with distressed customers, including J customers who can become confrontational and behave in unacceptable ways towards firm personnel who often are not at fault in any way. So, now the problem is that there are some customers for whom the service has gone wrong and they create lot of problem. Lot of problems for the service for personnel and there may be situations whereby the service personnel is not at fault. Good interactive skills combined with training and on the spot thinking are critical for frontline employees to deal with some such kind of bad situations. So, now again the frontline employees are there when this person is creating problem. Now, that, uh, that, is, uh, that is a more, more problem for the, uh, for the company because that will affect the other customers at the service facility. So, now in this case good interactive skills which are combined with training and on the spot thinking of this frontline employee can save this situation. So, when you are dealing with a complaining customer the first thing that needs to be done is to act fast. If the complaint is made during service delivery then time is of the essence to achieve a full recovery. So, when it is happening during the service delivery. So, then this time is of, of importance to uh, achieve a full, uh, full recovery. When complaints are made after the fact, after the, after the service has failed, many companies have established policies of responding within 24 hours or sooner. Even when full resolution is likely to take longer, fast acknowledgement remains very important. So, the service recovery may not happen within 24 hours. But acknowledgement is important and that should be done within 24 hours or even less. The second thing that needs, needs to be done is to acknowledge the customer's feeling. Do this either tactically or explicitly. For example, I can understand why you are upset and then take action. This action helps to build rapport, the first step in rebuilding a bruised relationship. Another important thing that the frontline employees can do is to acknowledge the customer's feeling just to say that I can understand why you are so upset. So, that is the first step in building back this relationship. The third is do not argue with the customers. The goal should be to gather facts to reach a mutually acceptable solution not to win a debate or prove that the customer is wrong. So, there is no point in arguing with the customer. More important is that you can you will talk to the customer so that some acceptable solution is uh, uh, comes out. It is not about winning a debate or proving who is wrong. That will uh, that will affect the company. It is about whether the solution is acceptable to the company as well as the customer so that the customer is satisfied and he continues with the firm. Show that you understand the problem from each customer's point of view. Seeing situations through the customer's eye is the only way to understand what they think has gone wrong and why they are upset. Service personnel should avoid jumping to conclusion with their own interpretations. So, the service personnel, the frontline employee should not be jumping to conclusion and have their own interpretation about what, what would have happened. So, they, the frontline employees and the service personnel should see from the customer's eyes about what has happened. Next, th next thing that needs to be done is to clarify the facts and sort out the cause. A failure may result from inefficiency of service, misunderstanding by customer or misbehavior of a third party. So, it is important to clarify and sort out what, what is the cause of service failure. That may be because of inefficient uh, delivery of service or some uh, misunderstanding with the customer or there has been a misbehavior by someone the third party someone outside the organization. If you have done something something wrong apologize immediately in order to win the understanding and trust of the customer. So, this is what 
is important that if you think that you have you have done some, something wrong there is a need to apologize immediately in order to win the understanding and the trust of the customer the second is the more the next is the more the customer can forgive you the less he or she will expect to be compensated so that is another important thing if the customer is more than willing to forgive you then he will not expect anything as compensation don't be defensive reacting defensively may suggest that the organization has something to hide or is reluctant to fully look into the situation so there is no need to be defensive things go wrong so reacting reacting or defensively will suggest that the organization has not done the homework fully and that will put the organization in in bad light so there is no no need to be defensive give customers the benefit of doubt customers should be treated as though they have a valid complaint until clear evidence proves that it is not true so first the company should assume that what customer is saying is correct unless it is proven otherwise if a lot of money is at stake as in insurance claims or potential lawsuits careful investigation needs to be carried out if the amount involved is small it may not be worth haggling over a refund or offer compensation so if the severity is high then there is a need to carry out uh, investigation and if the amount involved is low is a small so then there is no point in wasting time on that however it is still a good idea to check the records to see if there is a past history of dubious complaints by the same customers so that will tell whether this customer is a habitual offender or complainer that is he he keeps on complaining just in order to get a compensation so that the records will show propose the steps needed to solve the problem when instant solutions are not immediately available tell customers how the firm intend to take action to deal with this problem so the uh, instant solutions are not uh, possible so the company will have to tell the customer how they intend to take action so that so as to deal with this problem this also sets expectations about the time involved so firm can be careful not to over promise so when you are doing that when the company is doing that when there are no instant solution then it is important that the company will uh, is able to communicate the right amount of time in which actions can be taken so there is a chance to over promise and uh, if the company is not able to deliver in that time period then again it will lead to more se severe service failure so keep customer informed of the progress people tend to be more accepting if they know what is going on and receive periodic progress reports therefore people should be kept informed about what is going on regularly so then there is a need to keep the customer informed about what is happening regarding their complaint so where it is and at what stage of the process it is another thing that needs to needs to be done is to consider compensation this type of recovery strategy may also reduce the risk of legal action by an angry customer now if this the service has gone wrong and the customer goes to court takes legal action then the company may be in trouble so therefore this compensation can be a type of recovery strategy that can be used so that the customers do not take any legal action service guarantees often lay out in advance what such compensation will be and the firm should ensure that all guarantees are met so when the service go wrong there uh, and there is a chance that the customer may uh, may take legal action then obviously it is important to give him compensation now service guarantees when you have an effective service guarantee in place it lays out in advance what will be the compensation and that compensation sh should be paid to the customers and the company should also make sure that all guarantees are met another thing that uh, needs to be done uh, while dealing with complaining customer is to preserve to gain customer goodwill perseverance may be required to diffuse customers anger and to convince them 
that actions are being taken to avoid a recurrence of the problem. So, that is perseverance is required in order to diffuse an angry customer. Truly exceptional recovery efforts can be extremely effective in building loyalty and referrals. So, th this is what is important here truly exceptional recovery efforts. So, recovery efforts should be truly exceptional in order to build loyalty and the word of mouth. Then what can the company do next is to self check the service delivery system and improve it. After the customer has left, you should check to see whether the service failure was caused by accidental mistake or systemic defects. So, whether it is accident or systemic. So, that has to be checked. Take advantage of every complaint to perfect the whole service system. So, if it is by if, if, if the system is defective, then the system has to be rectified. And if it is accidental, then it has to be found, found out why this accident has happened, why it has occurred in the first place. So, whenever there is a complaint, take advantage of that to perfect the whole service system. Even if the complaint is found to be result of a misunderstanding by customers, so why this misunderstanding has happened? Because there are chances that this misunderstanding will happen again. That implies that some part of your communication system is ineffective and because it is ineffective, it has to be changed. So, to conclude, in this module, we have understood the service recovery paradox like what happens when service fails and what should company do. We have then learned principles of effective service recovery systems, discuss the guidelines for frontline employees on handling complaining customers and on recovering from service failures. These are the three books from which the material for this module was taken. Thank you.